Hi guys, so welcome all again on the webinar today is about the hiring a tech writer. And when we say tech writer, I hope everybody is clear, but just to clarify, tech writer involves everybody who is involved in the writing part of all the companies, especially the companies that have software. So hiring a tech writer, when we see it's basically, as we can see from the LinkedIn posts or any other social media post or even in the friend circle of technical writing when we discuss. So whether you are on the other side of table where you are actually in some way responsible for recruiting or you are on the other side, which is the majority side where you are actually trying to apply. So whether you are a recruiter or applicant, both the sides have their own set of challenges and for both the sides, it's not so easy when we talk about tech writer and why we have chosen this to topic when we talk about other fields in tech in, in IT industry or other industry like developers and other fields. We see there are specialized process. There are a lot of opportunities. But when we talk about tech writing, hire uh, recruitment, talk to the people who are actually involved in recruitment and they will tell you that pain point. So we thought of discussing some pain points of the recruiter also so that as an applicant we can also understand their pain. And of course the primary focus of the session is on the applicants where we will try to share some tips and all of you are free to basically add to it. So that you know, based on your experiences, you can also add. I will try to cover maximum thing. In case it's something is missed, please do try to add that. And hopefully after that, it will help all of us in being a better recruiter and a better applicant also. So let's first start with the recruiters. There are some recruiters in the room right now. So with recruiters, like. What are the challenges now in recruiters? We have we can categorize primarily into two types in an organization. One is the HR human resources group and others are the hiring managers which are from the technical documentation team primarily. How does this process run of recruitment? In many companies, human resources team have their own set uh, pool of uh, profiles which they already have which they have gathered from their employees or they themselves go ahead post the job ads at different social media places and like on sites like Nokri, Monster, Shine and all. But at times in many companies they contact third party vendors also which they have in general for overall recruitment for the recruitment of developers for the recruitment of project managers QA and all. So they also try to take the services of those vendors. Now here I will be talking about my personal experience. What I have seen when my team from HR has contacted vendors. Most of these vendors are really good when they have to shortlist and share the profiles of developers and other popular IT fields. But when it comes to technical writing, most of these vendors are at loss. They don't know at all how to match the criteria of a company with the profile of a technical writer. And as a result, very rarely in a company, a vendor is able to get a technical writer hired. Yes, for contract jobs, there are many opportunities and at times they succeed. But when we talk about a permanent role from a recruiter's perspective, we don't want to hire somebody just for a few months. We are looking for a future. That future could be as long as possible based on the mutual uh, you know, agreement. And when you look for that, vendors are really at loss. And that is where HR faces a lot of problem when they have to shortlist profiles and hand it over to the hiring managers. And as a result, the challenges of hiring managers start. Now, even if say for example, I am a hiring manager and as most of you know me and you know 
I am part of many WhatsApp groups, social media groups. We have different channels. I'm part of Tech Writers Tribe everywhere. But and we have a pool of around right now, even from Tech Writers Tribe, if I say it's a group of around 5000 people, 5000 plus overall when I talk about all the social media groups and other associations. Still, by organization process, I cannot simply go and post in the groups. Hey, I want to hire somebody in my company. Please apply. Because I am not allowed. HR has to run the process and so the profiles will go to HR and then of course then they will come to me. Now, as I discussed about the profile problem with HR, they don't get properly and even when the profiles directly come to HR at times even our HR, they might be H in. You might be knowing that in HR also they have certifications for technology, so they might be really good in profiling the developers and others. But when it comes to technical writer, even at times, unless they are really experienced and have some prior experience of hiring technical writers, they are also at last. So ultimately, all the responsibility comes down to the shoulder of hiring manager who is already overloaded with other kind of work. So now hiring manager has the job of filtering the profiles, whatever is forwarded to them. Now what challenges as a hiring manager generally I see? People apply. There is no harm on apply, in applying, but when we talk about technical writer, you will often hear from developers and others. How does the accuracy of resume matter? And actually it works for them because it's about technology, some experiences, some good experiences and it works for them. But and in developers profile and other profile, the matching certification, whether they uh, whether they, have, they are a graduate from uh, in BE or some other uh, related field, all those matter. People just see that, then they see their experience and they are technically starting with the HR screening round. But in technical writing, as you many, uh, many uh, must have noticed this, we are still up to not, not up to that level where our degree matters in getting us a technical writer's job. You may be a graduate in English, masters in English. That gives you probably a bit of edge where people are more focused on English, but still it's not a direct relation considered. Then any other graduate can apply for technical writing job. So as a result, and then we have different kind of certifications now. Based on certifications, slowly companies are maturing and they see the certifications that uh, technical writers take. And if some of those certifications match with the profile they are looking for, those things get an edge. Of course, you will be tested for that, but at least before uh, on while profiling the resume, those things work. But the most important thing what works and what basically puts a manager of a hiring manager who is uh, short uh, shortlisting the resume and this is not just my opinion probably if you have also recruited some of you then you must have also noticed and of course i have talked to different other managers not only from india from outside also and one simple criteria they see is unprofessional resume and when we say unprofessional what does this mean technical writers resume is not supposed to have grammatical and typos, grammatical errors and typos. Probably they are OK with resume of others. But in technical writing you are applying, you are supposed to be good with English and you are supposed to be good in reviewing. And if you haven't reviewed your own resume, that's the big put off for a hiring manager and many managers. The moment they come across one problem, one such problem, eyebrows are raised and probably they don't even you know screen the whole profile. Second problem comes about mismatched resume. We have to remember that when a company advertises for a job, most of the companies will put some mandatory criteria. Some are mandatory and some are desired. At least our profiles should match the mandatory criteria. Yes, we need job. We apply for it, but then 
no wonder many of us go to social media posts and say in the last two months i have applied for 100 jobs and probably got no response i'm not blaming them i'm just saying there may be if we are talking about some high numbers there may be this instance also that even if your profile is good for one particular field but for that particular role in a particular company your resume might might not be matching with the mandatory criteria and when the recruiter has advertised mandatory criteria separately they are a bit serious about it because they don't want people to get trained on the job at least on those things whatever is the preferred one for that they are ready to get and give the training and that may be their company's own reasons and it cannot be discussed why they have said the many people ask that okay why is a company saying madcap flair or any other tool is mandatory that's their wish that's their requirement they might need a person who right from the time of joining from second day starts using madcap flair they might be ready to train the person on product and other things but on madcap flair they don't want to train that person so that's the requirement and now why they don't want to train that's their personal wish so this mismatch resume these two unprofessional and mismatch first they get filtered out then some profiles are fine they are not unprofessional they are not mismatched but at the later stage i mean they are shortlisted okay they are shortlisted and but later stage when we they come to the interview process then probably it is realized that what's written in resume is not actually the reality in resume probably i have written expert in something but when i talk to the person then the interview realizes that actually the person is not expert and maybe the person just has you know basic experience i will give you one very small example from my recruiting experiences long back uh, i was my team was working on madcap flare and uh, we had uh, one other key requirement also so in the job ad we strictly basically advertise two key components just two key components one good knowledge of technical writing english and we specified is equal to american english and second expert in madcap flair because the position was not of a junior the position was of a senior writer i got some resume which mentioned of course american english unless we meet we cannot know if the person says yes fine i got few persons who were saying they are expert or good in madcap flair so even till good level i selected the profiles and to just share few instances when i asked the person i gave the person a laptop in front of me and i asked that okay this laptop has madcap flair and this is a small task i want you to perform so please find where is madcap flair on this laptop and open it many persons could not find where madcap flair is they did not know the icon of madcap flair which was right in front on the desktop some person luckily saw the name madcap flair opened it and when madcap flair opened they did not know how to navigate what does the left pin mean what does the body text body part mean so this is where i give the example of reality versus resume yes they wasted their time and they wasted our time also but anyway with all these challenges going on finally hiring managers do get some profiles it's not like everybody is like that so they every company finally gets to a conclusion and they do shortlist some profile so these are some challenges do we have any uh, anybody here who wants to add to those challenges please feel feel free to unmute yourself and talk uh, uh, you, yes please go on 
thank you. Uh, hi, Preet. So, uh, my question is, uh, I have seen a lot, many number of times, uh, people who have, okay, so this is beyond resume. They have been hired, they have good resume. And funnily, in very good companies, I've seen um, a documentation managers and senior, like extreme senior level documentation. Again, I'm not pointing fingers, but they have really poor English. And um, does it justify or is it because, um, is it also, I mean, because I feel, as you were saying, um, that re in resume, one of the most important things you check out is how well it is written. And not much, not just written, it should be reviewed, it should be grammatically correct. But um, how do so many people I have seen uh, who have very poor grammar, but they also rise to a very high level in the documentation, um, you know, ladder. So, and I, I probably this is not very uh, specific, but I just wanted to ask if you guys are experienced. So, <clears throat> completely agree. This does happen, and not only with managers, with writers, and not only in technical writing field in other departments also. This does happen. How does it happen? Uh, probably at the time of hiring. You have to be in that system to understand. No, so obviously I mean uh, she is talking from her experience. She has these, seen the uh, system, right? Yeah. So she is not a fresher, and so she has seen the system. But yes, that this is where I will say, probably at the time of recruitment, the situation of company was something different. Maybe the person hired many times. I'm not sure how many of you have gone through it, but at least I have seen instances where people are getting a uh, technical writers are getting hired by non-technical writing team people because they don't have a system okay so at times it does happen the rules certainly doesn't apply to everyone and every company but yes those misses do happen and there could be multiple reasons for that and i agree to that that situation is Puneet, i have a question uh, in the ppt you were talking about american english right yeah uh, so I write, I mean, I have I have grown up reading Victorian classics, so I mostly write in UK English. So how to transition from UK English to American English? Mm, that's a different set of question, but still uh, the simple way is practice and practice. First, we should know what is the difference between American English and UK English. And knowing that is very simple. Visit any documentation website. I'm saying company, any company's documentation website. Now, not company's corporate portal, okay? Yeah. Visit any company's documentation website and generally most of the companies follow American uh, English. Yes, now the trend is a bit changing because earlier most of the customers were from America, USA, but now there are companies having good presence of clients in Europe and Asia. So the rules based on the uh, uh, clients it might be changing still i see in technical writing still american english is dominating so when you read those documents you will be able to see the difference and of course you just simply google uh, british english versus american english okay yeah. simply google that and you will get a lot of links where you will see how it is different so to transition simply try to practice that And of course, still questions remaining. We are always here in the groups. Uh, we have a question from Snehal Puneet. Uh, what if the resume uh, was developed by a resume writer, right? And a candidate's re resume gets selected. So yes, so candidate's resume gets selected. So this is the last point, long effort to reach desired profile. So it gets selected. Uh, so it's one of the desired profile that the recruiting manager is hire, uh, looking for. And after that, completely it's the interview process that starts. Why I kept these things as challenges is that most of us feel this pain that we keep on applying, but we don't get a call. Once we get a call and we start with the interview process, that's a different stage. But the first stage is this is where, and this is why I kept this slide at uh, challenges as separate. The cha uh, and other things will be in the next slide. That what are the challenges basically 
the HR team and the hiring managers go through in profiling a, in finding a good profile. So probably as a technical writer, when we are at least applying, we should take care of these things. I hope that answer with another challenge. Yeah, please go ahead. Challenge. Yeah, another challenge. Yeah, another challenge that I find is once you have, uh, uh, you know, enough experience, for example, five, six years or plus, then your resume also is uh, very lengthy, you know, it grows. So, uh, how to mention in compact uh, uh, all the things in just, uh, you know, minimalism kind of thing? Your entire experience right, of right, right. So that is experience. where, yeah. So that is where I have come across two lines of thought. One line of thought says, this is where I mean I'm not uh, uh, saying that one line is correct and one line is wrong. I'm just saying two line of thought of thought I have come across. One line of thought says that write your experience whatever you have properly because resume is the only thing that are that a hiring manager reads and then only the person will be calling you so give all detail other line of thought says that there only the art of storytelling from a technical writer comes the bigger the experience the more the experience is the resume should be shorter that is the art and if you can show that Yes, for details, they can always ask for, but that is where if you can show, then yes, probably it will not fit in one page, but at least two page is the general mark rule. People say it should not go beyond two, uh, two pages. So two line of thoughts are there. And one thing is there, yes, I agree. Uh, since um, the number of experience uh, increases, we keep on doing a lot of work. So reducing them to one page or two page becomes very challenging. Uh, but probably then we will better. Uh, we should better do that and just keep the main things in the resume. Still, it just goes. Uh, it also goes over two uh, two pages because one thing we so probably what we can uh, we can also think from a story writing perspective when we read a story or when we see a video on WhatsApp or anything. If the video is running into one minute, why do you see it? If a story is running into multiple paragraphs, why do you read the full? Which stories do you read full? You read only those stories full where after first line you feel oh what's next? Let's read. After first para, you feel, oh, what's next? Let's read. So probably the resume should be written in a way where the attraction doesn't go and people don't see that. Oh my God, it's five pages. I'm not going to read all. So maybe a bit of mix of both, I will say. Yeah, but what happens is what I am um, seeing uh, the problem is uh, like right now, I have a very detailed uh, resume and it is quite long. So I'm mentioning everything in that like roles, responsibilities, whatever I did. So if you have a compact resume, uh, there is a possibility that uh, you will cut down uh, things in short. But if this happens, then during interview, what if you don't remember uh, the work that you did in the past, you know, so you may uh, forget to tell the interviewer about it. That's, a very, inter so that's a very things. interesting point. And can I ask you to wait for the answer of this question? Yeah, sure. And we are covering this in the next uh, next few slides. Okay. Okay. Just re remembering what we have to tell. Okay. Yeah. On this, uh, shall we move on, or anybody else has I mean, anything to say? Uh, yeah. Shrutika here. Just one more question. Sorry about that. Um, so while recruiting, one challenge that I faced was, um, like you mentioned, most of these agencies are not, um, you know, that experienced while recruiting, looking for profiles of a technical writer. So I kept getting profiles, good profiles. Their English was good, but the only problem was they were uh, not exactly a problem, but uh, the issue that, uh, the thing that I found as an issue was all those profiles were from, uh, you know, uh, aerospace writing background. Okay. And because we were recruiting for an uh, for a senior role, we wanted someone who is already um, an expert in uh, software uh, documentation. Okay. So it was very difficult to convince my agent and the agency as well that do not send these profiles because it. We wanted someone who could start immediately, 
and uh, when you recruit someone from an aerospace writing background um, the style of writing the uh, style guide that they follow and the rules that they follow are very different because there uh, it is a matter of life and death so they have right. to follow something strictly right right so that was one of the challenges that i faced right so i can ask uh, i can add in this uh, you know domains right can we say domains yes yes punit domains yeah so so i think you explained are you looking for an answer for me <laughs> no i was just adding to the challenge right great yes this does and just to add a point here probably when we are specific about that in the job ad it make it will be good if we can add the domain specific stuff also yeah so that's that is what the challenge is punit even after adding uh, the yeah. domain uh, many agencies do not uh, are not well equipped to understand that requirement that is very true that is why i said these vendors are <laughs> of no use when it comes to technical writing exactly exactly Uh, that um, is one of the challenges that i faced and chance. for one position i had to uh, you know uh, short uh, screen at least uh, 30 to 32 resumes i know <laughs> talk about the pain of hiring managers i know people on the other side won't agree to it but still <laughs> yeah <laughs> so this is actually a uh, uh, interesting please, thing yeah please Uh, Punit, I have one small request. Uh, if I forward my CV to you, will you be able to give me feedback about how to improve it? Just request. I can certainly, depending upon if I have time. But yes, I will certainly like yeah. to do that. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you all for the input. Yeah. Something. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's actually yes. Yeah. I have a small question. So I am working in this field from last one year. Okay. So when I'm working pressing, in what? Yeah, working as a technical writer from last one year. Okay. So when I was applying for as a pressure for this job, I found some uh, like challenges. Like uh, the a lot of companies they had a requirement that they should be like good in English, and second thing was like they should be well known, like they should have basic knowledge of some tools. Okay. So as you know, as you know that there are yet a number of tools in the technical writing field, and as a pressure to get the basic of all these tools, like it will be challenging. So Certainly. like, yeah. So like, who I need to proceed because if these are the requirements, especially in the tools, so for pressure, it will be very tough to get the basic of all these. Yeah. Certainly. So we will be covering this when we come to the applicant section. Can this question wait? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thanks. So, thank you, guys, and so these were the challenges, some challenges, and now some tips and tricks to hire fast for recruiters. Of course, there will be many more. First of all, the JD should be hundred percent clear about the mandatory requirement. Yes, like Shrutika and others talked about different other challenges also. Well, from vendors, don't expect anything. That's the first rule. So apart from resume they cannot uh, fit up to our expectation i have not heard, no, uh, heard from any hiring manager so far that vendors have done a good job secondly but why is it important to write a good jd first of all the applicants who are applying at least they should know if they have known that okay their resume is mismatched and still they are sharing then that's i mean that's their decision but at least from our uh, the recruiting managers and you can always point out that look we had this mandatory very clearly specified now if it doesn't match if it doesn't match then we can't help and jd should be a bit interesting because it's or we talked about mismatched resume and all but the world is not full of mismatched resume there are many technical writers in the world in india also who are really really very well talented irrespective of the number of years of experience they have on their hand and they also always don't look for a job switch they look for some interesting company to work with irrespective of the size this is one good part in today's industry that everybody is not eyeing for bigger companies 
they are looking for some challenging role. So to attract better pool of resources, when I say better pool, such resources, which such profiles that can match your requirement, have the JD very clear and make it a bit interesting, make it more interactive. Your JD should give two feel. The applicant should feel that they will they are valued. They are not just you know considered as OK. People just people just keep applying. We will check back your job ad should have that attraction where applicants just by reading feel that OK, this team is respecting us right there. And how much you are awaiting the right talent? Why right is in green? Right is basically related to your mandatory requirement. So you are very sure and this is a an indirect interaction. OK, so then at least we will not get complaints that we keep applying to this company, but we don't get any response. People don't get selected. We can always say we value you, but then you value our requirement also. If the requirement is there and it's very well written, we are always welcoming you. So that JD plays a very big role because nowadays this JD, you don't have to be dependent on vendor. This JD goes into all social media, all your referrals. Then search for technical writers at the right place. The example I wrote, Mintra, probably all of you know. As far as I know, Mintra sells clothes. I can't buy laptops at Mintra, right? So the same thing. Don't go to vendors just blindly. Look at the right place, the groups, Basically technical where technical writers join hands. Look at those places. Use your network ex extensively so that you get more and more referrals. Referrals are still 80% successful because referrals people don't refer unless they think that the candidate is, candidate is kind of matching your requirement. And once you get the right profile, please don't wait for the bureaucracy. OK, act fast because the right profiles are you know it's not like they will be applying only in your company they will be applying at multiple places whoever picks them first they go so act fast and don't be very stringent on certain rules with the right profiles be a bit flexible and even if you don't find 100% right profile the profiles that you think that they have the capacity you know to sync up in future, be flexible. A bit you may call it compromise, but I will call it its benefit for you. They, you will have the opportunity to train. And why is it the opportunity to train? Because nowadays when we are hiring, the questions that we ask to the persons who have applied, like someone mentioned technical writing English, those are the core skills. But if you have if you're getting interviewed in some companies, you may realize that these days managers, hiring managers ask more question on soft skills. And these are the soft skills on the left team, uh, left side, hiring for a healthy team. Attitude plays much more bigger role than it that what it played a few years before. The adaptability you showed you when you talk or how your resume shows. And one of the most thing many hiring hiring managers actually die for it and they think if they just see that in some candidates, they'll go for it. Passion. If you show the passion, they know that you are the person. Even if you have some skills not 100% matching or maybe in interview, you know probably a few wrong answers you give, but they know you have the right passion and you will be able to overcome all the problems and you will be able to learn faster and you are applying for technical communication team. So of course that communication skill matters. It matters a lot. Again, all these are soft skill temperament. Yes, everybody has the right to get angry. Everybody has the right to feel upset and working place. Workplace is no different from a house. Even in our house, we get angry. We feel happy. All sort of emotions go on within a house at workplace also it goes but that temperament should not spoil the relation that temperament should not make one feel that other person or other team is enemy yes we fight we probably fight like dogs but at the end of the day we end up getting some good result and together we decide to work so this is the temperament that is required and one major thing now even if you 
or having less years of experience. Everybody wants the writers to be having that out of box thinking where they can plan and tomorrow work on their own. So these are some healthy uh, soft skills that these days recruiters basically ask questions about and we should be not corely focused on the skills, the core skills, core skills. Anyway, people will know the technical writing English, then the technical writing processes. Yes, know about the expectation is that they should know. Of course, there will be tests. There will be interviews to test that because that's the core work they are going to do. But there have been cases. I'm not sure how many of you know, but there have been cases where a writer is really good on the right hand side skills, which is the core skill. But if during the interview they find out that the left hand side skill, something is missing. Attitude is wrong. Temperament is kind of bad. They don't consider the profile. They reject it at the, even at the last stage. So soft skills have started playing a key role. Manager should also basically focus on that because if the temperament attitude is right, any person can always grow their skills any day. But this temperament attitude, this doesn't improve just in a day or two. That becomes a pain later. And in a team environment, if it's an IC role, fair enough. We don't care much about it. But if it's a team, this matters a lot. So these are the some key things probably recruiters can follow. And here I will take a, another pause. My God, we are running short of time. 1215. It is already probably I'm in just a warning. This session may stretch up to 1245. So OK, so this are all from the recruiters side. Anybody has any pointer to add? Otherwise, next one we move towards the applicants. Yeah, actually for a technical writer, uh, hiring a technical writer, whenever we get a resume, uh, we don't get resume for pure, you know, technical writer. Even the content writers, uh, they apply, they do not have knowledge of technical writing. Uh, there's a thin gap, thin line between the two, technical writing and content writing. So if a person has suppose worked on any uh, marketing uh, uh, content, in an IT company, so they think that they have uh, worked on technical writing, whereas the requirement is completely different. You know, they uh, the requirement uh, is for um, uh, preparation of the guides and release notes and uh, right, all, which, right, yeah. which they do not have idea at all. But still, yeah. they think that they are a technical writer. Yeah, that's where so uh, even the recruitment actually basically the hiring uh, person. They do not have this knowledge and say and so they uh, shortlist such resumes and uh, pass uh -huh. it on. OK, yeah, so they are only probably the role of interviewer comes in that they have to figure it out. And at times I don't feel bad and you know, maybe some candidates feel bad that OK, OK, you are rejecting me. But then at times giving suggestions help because fine your company might not have hired them, but this pointer if you can give then probably that will help them improve in later on while applying. They can work on that. I think they, they, this is where the JD, clear JD you know comes into yeah. uh, picture. Like if you have a clear uh, requirement definition, what is exactly requires, then it Certainly. will avoid such kind of thing. Yeah, and when you say, you know, like this clear JD, I just remembered one more thing when we, uh, when we are working as a technical writer, OK, when we are working on a project, how many times do we ask the product managers and the developers when you create Jira task, please write the requirement clearly. Don't we say them? And this yes, is the, yes, same, yes. <laughs> the same thing applies in JD also. Please write yes, it clearly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any and other this point? happens many a times. I mean, every time uh, this happens, just like uh, uh, they just you know put everything in the job description, whatever exists in the world. Yeah. But uh, how can you expect one person to know all the things? Certainly. That's where there should be some demarcation between de uh, mandatory and uh, desired. But yeah, these um, many of these JDs are completely messed up. We have seen so many. Any other pointers or questions? Yes, uh, Puneet, I have a question. When, when you say out of the box thinking, learning concepts like uh, complex problem solving and model thinking, will these uh, will these things help me in certainly. enhancing one's career? Certainly, certainly. 
look out of the box thinking simply means what it, it means. OK, out of the box is a phrase and it can be applied anywhere. It simply means that. First of all, you should have the capability to figure out a problem. And when we talk about technical writer, the problem is about how we are going to ease the life of a customer, right? Now, secondly, how you can provide a solution also. Just finding out the problem is one part only. Second part is how you can think about the solution. So irrespective of our role, we don't need to be a manager only to do that. So in a team, even if you're at a, any other level, junior level, or if you have that capability, that certainly adds, that's a bonus. OK, anybody else? Cool then, that's nice. And I hope uh, that clears at least a few things about recruitment. And that was from the other side of table. Now we move to the other side of the table. Applicants, and of course there are many, and all of us are applicants at one or other stage of our life. What are the challenges? These are the just the general challenges I have listed. First stage, many applications. On LinkedIn, I'm at, at times basically, I don't know whether people are exaggerating, but I see many posts where people say, I have applied to 152 places. Uh, this, that. So many applications, but not getting shortlisted. We feel like some of you mentioned that JD. OK, it matches the JD still. It does not go beyond HR screening. HR screening means HR calls, but then it does not go beyond that. Second is yes, HR screening is done. Few rounds are done, but then final offer is not come. And then of course we'll get back to you. I think this should go away. We'll get back to you. Tell the candidate very clearly. Nobody is a kid here. Nobody is going to commit suicide if you say we'll get back to you. OK, but instead of saying we'll get back to you, please tell why you did not shortlist because why you did not select the candidate, at least the candidates who reach the final stage. OK, because if you tell them it's very clear, they also know that OK, on what things they need to improve or actually do they need to improve? Because many times the position is one and we find three or four very suitable persons, but unfortunately we only have one position, so we have to tell them very politely. Look, you are 100% fit, but it's just that in this final round one person had an edge somewhere. But that is not at all about your capability or anything. You are 100% set uh, uh, fit. So sorry right now, but next time if we have an opening, we will directly call you. So maybe let's it's time we should be a bit more mature when the candidates who reach certain rounds, we should be very clear to them. So these are some challenges, generic challenges, very ch uh, generic challenges. Now applicants tips and tricks. These are the tips and tricks basically before applying. OK, this is not about hiring uh, when you are into the interview round. First of all, the applicants, I mean, take this hiring process for yourself as a major project. Today's world, you need to prepare yourself, not just when you may be applying four years down the lane, because four years down the lane when you suddenly need a job and then you start preparing yourself, at times it's a bit too late. So prepare yourself. First, try to be part of a good network related to your field. The most important thing is let the world know I exist. And how will you let the world know how, how I exist? You have to showcase your talent. How? We will see it in the next slide. We talked about resume, right? So please, please, please review your resume. Don't take it lightly. Oh, there were some spelling mistakes. What is the big deal? Yes, it's a big deal because you're going to be a technical writer. Today, if you think that in, in your resume, there are some mistakes and it's not a big deal. Tomorrow in the documentation, you're going to do the same, isn't it? This shows your attitude. This shows your seriousness. So honestly, it's not about a typo. Everybody understands there is a typo. It can happen, but the question is why is that typo existing? Were you serious about? 
applying when you if you were serious, you should have read it properly, right? You should have run the spell check. You should have seen that everything is proper. So this is about this shows the attitude. So guys, when I'm saying review your resume, I honestly don't doubt anybody's. If there are some grammatical mistakes by chance in your resume, that that doesn't mean you don't need to, you don't know how to write English. You know very well, but then why is it existing? Because for some reason, you sent the resume in a hurry and that shows you were not serious about applying. So different people take it different way, but forget about the reasons they come to. Your reason should be I am a technical writer. I am proud of the way I write English, so at least my resume should reflect it. Then pick a path in technical writing also like uh, it will mention about content writing other writings, domain, right? Like uh, Shrutika mentioned about domains. Pick a path. Technical writing is no more just one small field. Technical writer writing is well widespread. And even in technical writing, you know, the, uh, you guys have must have heard this term also. Many of you will be doing it also. Technical content writing. Content writing is something different. Technical content writing and technical writers. So there are different streams coming up for us to pick. So pick some path. I'm not saying just pick one path, but specialize in those and don't try to be master of all because you know that phrase, right? Which is related to the jack of all and something like that is there, right? So exactly. So pick some path for yourself within technical. Pick a path. I don't mean to say pick a path of technical writing. You are already a technical writer. I'm assuming it within technical writer also writing. Also pick a path specialize in that. Pick some core skills. There will there comes the upskill part. Now in upskill also today in COVID era, we see that many people say today I learned this tomorrow. I learned this this week. I learned this this week. I learned that. If it's coming free also, then also you should think was it in your plan of learning that? If it's part of your plan to boost your career, very good. But if it's not part of your plan and you just attended because the topic appeared interesting, or because in the industry you see your friends are following that course, that doesn't justify in my view because in fine it was free probably or it costed very less money but still it ate your time that same time you could have utilized in owning some skill that suits your path that you have decided so in this world of e-learning these days which is very very popular and we all are getting benefited by it right so at least focus on those skills yes i'm not saying don't learn anything which is not related to your path but at least focus on the core skills first Try to get completely properly skilled on those. And the last part is portfolio. Portfolio is related to I exist. I'll come to this in detail. Have a portfolio. All these you do before you are applying and not with just with an eye on applying, but to create yourself as a brand. And when you are applying, try to apply through referral. This is a normal thing. Everybody, all of you know that. And if you are, if you feel that I don't get a referral, plan for it. If you are targeting some companies, go to LinkedIn, send friend requests to unknown people from that company. Most of the time, uh, those requests are not rejected in the same professional circle. So you get a referral, ask the person, have a cover letter. Now, this is where like we talked about what if I have to write so many things in resume? Yes, you have to write so many things in resume, but if your cover letter is a few paragraphs, we will have a small pointer about this also in the next slide. Then it makes it attractive for the person to know why we should read your resume properly. And apply sparingly, guys. Just because you need a job, don't apply to 100 different places because you know you will get rejection, a rejection and uselessly it may cause depression also. All I'm saying is, when you are in the process of job application, keep your mind a bit cool. Try to plan for it. Plan well and then apply. It reduces your tension and it increases the chances of at least reaching up to the next level. So here I'm just explaining what I meant by I exist and cover letter. First cover letter. 
cover letter is basically most of you know what is cover letter with the resume. You can always send few lines that tells about yourself. It kind of letter which is called cover letter and it should among all the, and this cover letter should not become a big love letter. OK, so maybe two paragraphs. That's it. And it should primarily among other things explain. It should be a gist of your profile. It should primarily explain two things. What makes you the best fit? Because if you are applying, you must have thought this is what recruiters look for. You don't apply randomly. When you are applying, be serious about my company. You respect my company, I respect you. Second point, why should the company hire you? Why should the company hire you means company has a culture and company has a GD. Based on that, why should the company hire you? So at least in cover letter, try to include that. So get into the habit of writing a para or two. Please don't write, please, please, please don't write full pages in cover letter. Again, that thing turns off the person. And in cover letter, explain it in a way where the person becomes curious to read your profile properly. Now, then after that, if your profile is of two pages or six pages, then that doesn't matter because your cover letter has already generated that kind of attraction. I exist. What does it mean? I exist. Create your own brand and every brand doesn't mean to be the best of the world. But at least people around you should know that you exist and you have that kind of a specific skill. And for that, what all you do here also in uh, our group right now, there are a few who always keep posting some knowledgeable stuff, something nice on their wall. Post on social media and post on social media. This is one request. At least if you are looking from job perspective, if you are lo just looking from person's perspective, of course you can go and post the WhatsApp forwards on LinkedIn also. And you can share the LinkedIn post on WhatsApp also. I mean, that's your wish. But if you are looking to be a bit professional, if you want to be look, looked as a bit more professional, then first decide which social media is suitable for what. First, you have to do that. I'm very worried about, you know, India's war with China. That doesn't give me freedom to post it on LinkedIn. There are other media for that. I am worried about something else which is not profession related. That doesn't give me. I don't I mean that gives a different impression about me. So posts on social media now. So what kind of post professional post make it a habit to share your knowledge. It can be a small para. It can be a full post. It can be a full article. So share those kind of posts and keep it doing regularly at least maybe once a week. And this is second thing. Create your portfolio. Portfolio means many times people ask for sample work. Many times people don't, but many times people ask for sample work. Now at the time of interview when they're asking for sample work and if you don't have one, what will you do? Because most of the time what we feel in the companies that we are working, whatever link we have, if the links are uh, officially available, whatever links you provide, we can simply share. OK, this is the topic I have written. Fine, this is the topic you have written. But if you can have your own profile also, some sample work, you can think about writing blogs. Now blogs, you can maintain your personal blog as well as you can write for public websites. You can write the blogs and you can keep the link to share. As a technical writer, I would, express, uh, I would say you can cover if you want to have your samples uh, portfolio, then first of all, write about your field, write about technology, Focus on that and yes, of course you have the full freedom to write about like a content writer or also write, write about the weather, write about anything. But yes, most of the topics should be focused on your profession. And when you are writing such sample, uh, writing such blogs, again, do it seriously. Think that it's a project work for you because in future probably that's going to click in future. Probably that may happen that your blogs or your regular uh, LinkedIn posts or other posts may become so popular that you don't have to basically go. For uh, go to apply a uh, go to, for applying a job. People may come to you. Hey, I like your post. I like your blogs. I like it reflects a lot of knowledge. Would you like to join us? There may be situations. I know people who have got such offers. 
And then when we are talking about technical content writing, technical content writing in case you are not aware, technical writing is what we do. We all know technical content writing is writing about technology. Anything specific to technology and you write posts on that. So that's where you will see people are writing about Java. People are writing about XML. People are writing about some software. So it's not about just how to use that, but it's also about the technology aspect of it. OK, even if you write about a mobile, how good a mobile is and why it is, then that's also technical content writing that shows your technical understanding. So these are the things you can create your own brand and work consistently towards it. And one request I will certainly say in the long run, don't always think about job. Job is not the cure thing. If you are able to build your brand, what will it give you? It will automatically get you respect in the market. And then jobs will automatically come. Don't bother about that. Unless you know everybody has that really, really dark phase where nothing works. Unless that phase is there, job will automatically come if you can create a brand of yourself. OK, so here I will take a pause, small pause, and uh, anybody has anything to add? Uh, yes, Puneet, I have a question. Yep. Uh, I don't know whether it is directly related to this topic or not. But, uh, what I do is, uh, I mean, you were talking about posting relevant stuff only, right? Like writing on technology and uh, related things like that. Yeah, uh, on specific media. Yeah, on specific media. But the thing is that on uh, LinkedIn, I, I keep posting poems. Do you think it is appropriate or it will put me in the wrong, wrong light? No, look, this is what I'm saying. This is not on me to think what is wrong or right. This is about you to think how you want to portray to the world how you are. OK, mm -hmm. for example, let's get out of LinkedIn. Think about if you have a Facebook account. If somebody posts too many political message, don't you think this person is too political? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So if you like that person's political view, you become a fan of that person. But if you hate that person's political view without mm -hmm. any interaction with that person, you start disliking that person. Don't you do that? Yeah. So the same applies at LinkedIn or other thing also. How we want to project ourselves. If you think, if you think poems, now poems, if, in my personal view, okay, poems are again a creative thing as long as it's a, about your poem. Mm -hmm. If you're sharing others also, it shows that, okay, you have the habit of reading. I will see it from that perspective. Okay. Yeah. Because I was afraid that it might project me in a wrong light that fast. No, no. I mean, this is where you have to be a bit judgmental. Uh, I mean, people can be judgmental on many things, but yes, anything which adds to knowledge and something related to English. And of course, if you will keep posting only about poem, then people will add the name of poet, tag of poet to your name, certainly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you keep a mix, it's all good. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Anybody else has any pointers? And how if I post once on LinkedIn, would that be enough? Because I'm there, not in there a is, There is no there is no rule about it, but yes, don't overdo it. That's certainly one rule. Sure. Yep. Next, somebody was saying something. Hi, Puneet. So um I think what really helped me was maintaining a medium. I mean, if um, you have a lot to say, probably if you think your content would be a five minute read or more than that, I think medium, you can build up uh, your profile on medium. You can post it via various um, um, yeah. Publishing publishers like UX Collective and a lot of that. I mean, I'm giving you an example and that Perfect. has really helped me to I'm sorry that has really helped me to uh, show that I understand design and I, under, I, under, I understand the core uh, emotion that is I feel technical writing the core emotion is empathy whichever uh, writing in general in technical. so I think that has really added like a brownie point to yeah. my um, resume Certainly, those medium and there are many other things, uh, many other websites. I mean, those have become really a good grooming ground for many of us. 
this is where yes you pick your place where you want to be but do this this is what helps you build your brand thank you anything else anybody otherwise we move to the last part now in tips and trick fine shortlisted you are shortlisted you followed everything and even if you don't follow everything but you are shortlisted what do we do generally i have categorized it on the general phenomena where we first go with the screening round with hr then we go in technical writing generally we have a written test then we go for the interview round interview round can be a technical round which could be with reporting manager or somebody uh, from the technical documentation team then we have the management round and then we have the final salary round so based on that i have categorized these things probably may be different for some but in general so in screening round what all sh we should do to save any kind of disappointment later please be ready with the first point convincing reason for why you want to switch many say what the hr only uh, you know approached me now isn't this a silly question why do you want to switch yes they approached you fair enough but they still want to know why did you accept their offer of uh, you know applying you must be having a reason if you certainly if your reason sounds like you know actually you were not ready for that that gives a negative impression i'm not saying just by that answer you will be rejected but you have to show that you are ready remember it's we who need the job they also need the candidate right but we also need the job so we have to do the best from our end salary range if desperately looking for a job obviously there is no negotiation but if you are not desperate right at hr screening round clarify whatever be your expectation otherwise taking all the interview rounds and then finally getting disappointed it's quite a waste of time for you clarify about overall interview process generally hr provide you the information that there will be these many rounds this will this is how it will go but in case they fail to do that do clarify so that you are clear that okay what's next and it's good to know if and all these questions of course if you are desperate nothing matters hr calls and you will say yes sir yes madam i am ready when you want me to join of course we all go through that phase is and then there is no negotiation because at that time we are not in a place to negotiate but if you are in a place to in a position to negotiate then all these that okay what is the work from home what is the culture uh, what is uh, what questions that matter you for some work from home is important for some culture is important for some how is the team uh, how is the team documentation team i was i will be working with or the team how is the team there are many questions i just gave some examples then second aspect after screening round we reach is written test and in written test trust me guys many people will say many thing we can keep on discussing in different groups what is important and what is not but for a technical writer unless you are getting hired as a manager still written test holds the key because this is one aspect nobody can train us what we have been writing because unlearning is the biggest challenge for anyone so if we have learned something we should show that in the written test and in written test the key aspects all of you know how to do so basically show your technical writing english skill don't write in general english your presentation if it's a detailed answer your clarity of thought should be very much there and you like in technical documentation what will you do for a project you will try to project in a way uh, present in a storyline type of th thing so try to do the same justice during in, uh, written tests also and most important read questions carefully many times it happens the question is written and actually you have missed the question and you write something else if the question is about uh, you know what to say writing something about a mobile app you might end up writing how to use it on browser you wrote very well but then you missed the question so read the questions very carefully and in case you are unable to understand give a call to the hr or whomsoever the uh, contact person is i am unable to understand this question can you explain it to me instead of skipping it or giving the wrong answer because your answers might be very well written but then if it doesn't match the question it shows that you don't have that 
patience for detail. Value the time because the written tests are only mostly timed and if possible, I mean make it possible. Whatever if there are five questions and you are able to write four questions only, but at least those four questions should be apt. Please remember written test in technical writing is not always all always about marks that okay 100 mark is there and there should be 70% cut off. You might score 68 by just score writing four questions, but if those four questions you have written in proper impressive way, the interview will the recruiter will not mind you skipping the fifth question. And for the fifth question, write it. I had less time. If you given the opportunity, I will write it again. So revise properly and write less, but accurate. That's for the written test. So focus pair primarily whatever you hold as the technical writing key skills. The technical writing key skills about Yes, English technical writing English is one part and how we simplify things and present. That's primarily the two things we should focus on. Now written test done. We go to technical interview. Technical interview probably do a few things. Study the GED properly. Prepare yourself. A lot of preparation is required. OK, prepare yourself. Learn about the recruiting company. If somebody asks you the question, so can you tell us something about your company? This question is not a, uh, this answer is not at all acceptable. Sorry, I didn't see the website. No, that means again you were just doing some time pass and came for the interview. You were not serious about it. all people know need is we respect seriousness from the recruiters and recruiters need seriousness from us. So we should show that that before coming for this interview, we were well prepared. We have worked on it. Learn about recruiting team if possible. So this is where if you are coming from a referral, you might have a chance to learn about which recruiting team is there so that you should uh, you may get a chance to know what tools they are using, what processes they are using. So you know you can twist your answers accordingly using the skills that you have. And of course, when you have used any word in your resume, please be ready. Anything can be asked, even if it's if you are a 10 years uh, having 10 years experience, even if it is that something people are free to ask. You can't say that, oh, it's 10 year old thing. Now I forgot about it. If it is there in the resume, they are entitled to ask. Now, how will you practice? Your resume is your biggest thing. How will you practice? Because most of the questions are asked from your resume. Practice to interview. Practicing is in itself an art. If you are serious about a job application, practice. On your own resume, sit and prepare questions. Think where, if you were the recruiter, which questions you will ask. Now, for every question, prepare two to three types of answer. Rehearse it so that there, when you are explaining, you don't, you know, uh, basically fall short. So do a thorough preparation when you are preparing for a technical interview. Technical interview is always not that easy. Many times we feel that OK, we have done well, but actually you haven't done well. Because the recruiter was looking for some different kind of answer or some different aspect. So this is why I'm saying prepare different kind of question, uh, different kind of answers for the same kind of question. So basically in short, be fully equipped with what you have written in your resume. And general things like many times uh, uh, when I mean avoid generic examples. OK, so for this product, if I my question is OK, you're an experienced one and you have written for product. So for this product, uh, what all you did? Oh, I wrote I wrote one user guide or one installation guide and you know the team was there. So we prepared some release notes and all that's all. For me or for many recruiters, this is a generic example. Yes, you did that, but get into depth. What exactly you made the effort to do that? We are looking for the recruiter is looking for your effort and then the question will come. OK, you said that two or three persons worked on this project. What was your role in that? Be ready to explain that properly. Explain using examples from product. Explain using examples from the way you documented the plan, the overall thought process. Try to use those terms. Give the substantial example. Substantiate every description with relevant workplace example. Just generic example. Do not give a clear idea to the interviewer. And in case if you feel that despite your best attempt, there is some confrontation situation, confrontational situation with the interviewer. 
unless the interviewer is really, really rude. If somebody is really rude, seriously, if I will be there, I will give my peace of mind. But if somebody is not exactly rude, but there is some confrontation thing where you are not agreeing to a point, politely say, OK, fine, this is what I knew, so I shared. Beyond that, I don't know. Politely avoid it. Handle gently the questions on altercation. Often it is asked, if you were in this position and your management is not agreeing to it, how will you push your case? Don't end up abusing your company management or boss in the interviews. Nobody claps for it. They might smile and they say that time that was good, but they will immediately feel if that was the attitude there, what will be the attitude here? Red flag. And when somebody asks at the end of the interview, do you have any question? Don't say no, I don't have any question. And then don't go ahead and ask about salary expectation and all that is for again. Ask at the right place when you are going to the last round. Salary is not something which is supposed to be asked during the technical interviews. In the technical interviews, ask questions that show your zeal to work for that company. OK, what is the product you're working? What is the career growth here? Something like that. What is the team structure you have? What? Do, how do you work? Things like that, which shows that you are keen on joining the project and you want information about that. That's during interview. After technical interview, we go to the probably some companies have interview with further management. Now again, remember management most of the times is not from technical documentation team, so they won't be interested in what is technical writing English. What is the tool that you are using? They will be more interested in your behavioral approach, your ability to plan how your thought process runs, how you show your understanding, what effort you take to basically understand a product and then simplify that how you think technical as a technical writer you can add value to the company the approach is completely different here because your technical accuracy and skill has already been tested and they have got the score so they know whether you are good or not and of course you are good then only you have reached the management level here you see that how you're in future you're going to add value so think from that perspective and of course then the final lecture round everything goes hard again the same formula applies if you have nothing at all if you are desperate but if you have reached the final lecture round then remember you have a hope you can talk about some kind of salary thing here here you are not desperate now the company is desperate because you have reached final lecture round everything has given everybody has given a green flag to you so here you can negotiate a bit and of course, if you are not of those uh, falling into those category where you badly need a job, negotiate hard. And while negotiating, HR is very smart mostly. Plan in advance how much you want to bend and be very clear about the reasons. And then ask about other things that show that, okay, how you also think about a company should be. And yes, when you are going for all that, uh, many times I have heard that people just see the number. OK, I the no, final number says 10 lakhs. Oh, wow. I mean, if somebody is jumping from 6 to 10, it's a big thing, right? So, oh, wow, I reached 10 lakhs. When they join the company and then they see the breakup that actually their take home is at times lesser than what the what they were getting before. So do see those breakup and all before saying yes. So these are the few expectations covering from all around. So this is about applicants. That's all I could think about. Anybody has any questions or pointers to add? Any agreement, disagreement? Sorry, we ran out of time, so we will just take five minutes and wind up. Anybody? Thanks, Puneet. We have covered most of the point that we have gone through in our career. So thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Anything to add? Yeah, I must say that I thoroughly enjoyed this session. It was really good to hear from you the basic intricacies involved in the technical writing profession. And uh, I really feel that I'm learning everything, something new by being a part of this. Group. Great. Glad to know. Thank you. Uh, hi, Puneet. This is Ram. Yeah. Please. Okay, please. Yeah. No, no, you go ahead. She will take. No, Okay, sh shall I ask you? Yeah, yeah, please. 
Okay, okay. Uh, as you said earlier, we don't have any specific courses for a fresher. Uh, like we don't have any graduate programs or anything for a fresher to join the technical writing domain. So, if I were to uh, suggest a fresher, like a graduate for this uh, technical writing domain, how should I do that? Like, uh, what sh should be the guidance given to such uh, people, like you know, freshers? Great question. So, first thing I will point out. Uh, I said that the certificate, I mean, the degree courses are not valued, but yes, there in the market, there are degree courses available. International level, there are many degree courses available in technical writing. I think even our symbiosis at Pune and some other university provide some uh, some certificate, not certificate, degree courses also in technical writing. What I'm saying PG is, diploma. sorry? PG diploma or diploma. So yeah, so. There are some courses coming from universities and at international level, I am 100% sure there are many technical writing courses. I mean, technical writing is a subject like any other subject. But what I'm saying is, Rahul, that it is not valued much, at least in India right now. Hiring managers, give them a better hand that, okay, you have done that. But what they look for is the practical experience. So now coming to your second part, that what you should tell them what should you should tell a fresher or something why to join the technical writing that's what your question is rahul yeah that's right anybody would like to take that question uh, I, yes i will try to answer this in, to the best of my knowledge if you allow me sure sure uh, so i think technical writing is uh, growing by leaps and bounds in india and especially post this covid crisis i think uh, india will become much more stronger in terms of it it as a IT hub, so I think there is so much of scope for uh, technical writing in India. Apart from that, technical writing is both creative at the same time. It involves reasoning and analytical skills, so it is a perfect blend of both. And uh, for somebody who really loves technology and somebody who really likes to explain the technology in the best, easiest way possible, then I think they should go for technical writing, and they will find it very satisfying, lucrative, and at the same time fulfilling in their life. Thank you, Sujendra. Anybody else wants to add? Why technical writing? That's the question. Why you should tell a fresher or somebody to join technical writing or encourage them? I think I would. I'm sorry. I could need. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, that the reason why uh, one or I would say any fresher to join technical writing is is uh, it's a, it's the best amalgamation according to me. Um, I mean, mostly in most, uh, um, it, it's the best amalgamation of technical and art in the sense that with when you say art, there is also an emotion which gets added that is um, in, that is in the form of empathy, in the form of understanding. And that can also, and that has taught me in my personal life how to be empathetic to others too. So I feel that that is one of the, I mean, that's according to right. me, one of the least uh, takeaway I have got from this um, profession. So, yeah, yep. that's Thanks, it. Anushree. Anyone uh, else has? Add to it. Uh, yeah. So what I gather from uh, Rahul's question is uh, actually how to guide people yeah. to become tech writers, right? Yeah. So uh, any kind of degree is uh, good enough. But yes, we should convince that uh, technical writing is uh, for her to stay, of course. And uh, I would also like to uh, add to it that though some of these do not have um, much recognition in India, maybe the certificate courses or these diploma courses. But as a whole, I really do think that uh, if, if you guide towards them, I mean, to these courses, the, the freshers, they will have this direction as to where to start and how to start. And then after joining joining a course, they don't know what to do, what exactly, then they make mistakes. And when they try to join other uh, companies, then they do not get uh, offers or uh, they are uh, not really selected. So all this happens. So we, all those who are experienced here, already here in this uh, field for so long, I think we should really encourage freshers to join some course take up this course as in how this course takes up i'm sure that the 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 validity of the course and uh, uh, its importance will also increase so that is what i think so because uh, 
we all have not done any course, but we have learned through our experiences. But now we, we as experienced people are already there to guide them so they can, you know, grow faster in life who are the freshers. Uh, I think uh, so we all should promote uh, these courses who are really good courses and uh, that gives a direction. And as Puneet, you already said that uh, we should have a direction like in technical writing also there's so much thing there are so much thing and we are learning everything you know going haywire um i i also have one example of this uh, there are some freshers who do come to me and say uh, please palavi can you look at this assignment i applied and i'm not getting here i'm not getting there and you won't believe that the first thing i always tell them is please improve improve your english and it's not that they don't know English, but the proper use of prepositions, the proper use of uh, uh, proper use of, uh, you know, uh, the, the sentence constructions, uh, conjunctions and all these. And as uh, Sutindra also said, uh, American English. So let them have this guidance. Um, and yes, someone did say, Snehal said, um, I did not mention about style guide. Yes, of course. So. Uh, all these companies are falling. That's why they all are, um, you know, uh, trying to. Uh, we always we never see or we or I say, I'll say that we see very less of freshers getting uh, absorbed in technical writing. We always see two to three years of experience because this is what companies are looking forward for. That at least they know what are what are style guides. At least they know what to write, how to write a procedure, and then they can, you know, build on it. So that is my take on it. Thanks, Pallavi. That's pretty detailed and very helpful. I think it covers most of the point. Just one more point I would like to add here, Rahul. Whenever we want to choose a career, what we think yeah. is, how is the future in this career? First point is, why should I enter this career? OK, second point is, how is the future in this career? So the first point, why should I choose this career? Because this is one of the hot cake not only here but across the globe most of the time in the last five to ten years survey when we talk about the top most jo uh, jobs technical writing often features there so it is it has a uh, it is popular and it is popular because it is a job which gives an understanding of the product and using our english skill which most of us generally own through the education that we have irrespective of the certificates that we are handling second part is what is the future so the future is pretty bright now in technical earlier technical writing was limited to some aspects now it's not only up to software industry we all are primarily from software most of us but technical writing is into almost every industry that you know they might be giving different names to the designation so technical writing is certainly increasing and directly relate technical writing with technology as long as the technology will be there technical writing will be there so yes it has a great career future path also and how to grow certainly people have to uh, understand what skills they need to enhance on that either they can work on their own if they can or else they can join different kind of courses available in the market does that help rahul overall all the answers yeah i just needed to clear about one thing also like yeah. uh, if I am, if I were to advise some uh, fourth year engineering student like from a computer science background on uh, on how to become a programmer or something, I could just ask him to do a course on programming like Java development or anything, and uh, he could easily earn a job in a software uh, environment as a junior developer. But uh, as Pallavi mentioned earlier, most of the companies uh, having tech writing, they opt for opt for uh, technical writers who are around two to three years of experience. So is there any available like I don't know much, but is there any availability for freshers to be? Uh, yes, yeah. there there are certainly many opportunities for freshers. Yes, we will see them less at least during the COVID time because companies as we can uh, we talked before the session also companies are already have different kind of constants, but for freshers there are opportunities coming in multiple cities. It's just that that particular pressure has to be ready at that point of time. 
ready, well equipped with a certificate because in a fresher, certainly now people will look for certificate certificate because they don't have direct means because there is no, you know, graduation course, which is uh, that like uh, in case of uh, developers, there is a B and all. So how do they just so they look for a certificate course and then of course there will be written test and all if they get lucky to be called and they have to perform. So they have to be ready with that. So yes, there are jobs. Puneet, I have uh, a few more questions. I mean, like just two questions. Uh -huh. uh, Puneet, uh, my company uses PPT for preparing user guides. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm planning to do this uh, Microsoft Office specialist exams will be there, no, for Word and PPT. I want to do both. Do you think it's a good idea? Because we need a lot in this. And do you think PPT course will uh, help me in the long run? Um, honestly, Sushindra, if you ask me for Microsoft Word, May PPT, I add to that? yeah, Tanishri, please. Uh, who is that? Sorry, Tanishri. Yes, um, Puneet, I'm sorry, uh, there was some yeah, internet issue. So I, because I, uh, when I began with as a fresher, uh, I would say um, if contract based job is not an issue and it is really not an issue. It is a great way to uh, begin technical writing because uh, you understand whether technical writing is for you or not. And uh, you also come to and they very easily are ready to absorb you as a technical writer. That's how I began with SAP um, as a technical writer, and it was a very good exposure. I mean, if someone, I think if a fresher can be told uh, this, if they are ready for that, and the best thing about that is uh, you, whatever you coach, you get paid. There is no, um, unlike other places where you say uh, something is a CTC, and what, there is a difference in in-hand and CTC, uh, in contract-based, um, that is not there. So yes, there is a trade-off with, uh, trade off in terms of um, stability, but I think if technical writing, um, if certification is not there for the fresher, contract based can be a very good way. Certainly. So, somewhere you show your skills, then that adds to your profile and you build your career. Uh, so, Dindra, so coming to your question, look, learning anyway, anytime is good. Okay. So and if you think that's the way you have to work for some time now, and if you feel there is a need to uh, or need for uh, enhanced training, so certainly go for it. And so you can go for any paid certificate, uh, pay, paid training, or probably at least in MS cases, I mean Microsoft's cases, uh, we generally know they have a really, really good help. OK. okay. So whether you talk about Word, whether you talk about PPT, or whether you talk about any product of Microsoft, OK, so you will see they have a really good set of uh, uh, help. Probably you can explore that. And if if that doesn't help you, then certainly trainings are there. Sure. OK, guys, so shall we wind up now? Anybody else has anything else? Question? Any other question? Otherwise, we will wind up now. We are already too late. Sorry for that. OK. 